What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here, and welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus check update, what's going on in the United States, what's going on in Washington, D.C., money, investing, and the $3.5 trillion stimulus package, which will be the largest stimulus package ever, almost twice the size of the third stimulus check package, which was $1.9 trillion. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. It's completely free to do so, so you don't miss out on updates on the next stimulus package that they're working on right now, money, investing, the economy, and everything you need to know about. New videos come out here every day on our channel at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you find these videos helpful, don't forget to hit the like button for us, and let's jump right in. Okay, first up, multiple different Republicans from both the House and the Senate have been calling for an impeachment of President Biden or to use the 25th Amendment to possibly remove President Biden. And Minority Leader, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell was asked about possibly having President Biden impeached or having the 25th Amendment used against him to be have him removed. Here was the interview or the question. One of the first things that President Biden did was he cut the XL pipeline and then a few weeks ago he implored uh, OPEC to drill baby drill and do that. So there's a contradictory there. The border is wide open. Uh, the economy is not where it needs to be. Uh, we, this horrible pullout of Af Afghanistan has really created, as you said, a, a black mark on our country. Um, the Taliban gave them a commitment, the, the, the president a commitment, that they will comply with their wishes, which we can't trust. Uh, are these, is this behavior impeachable? And if it is, would it be supported? And if that does happen, how confident are we or are you in the next level of leadership going forward in our vice president? Well, look, the, uh, the president's not going to be removed from office the Democratic House. Narrowly Democratic Senate, that, that's not going to happen. <clears throat> I, I think that two things that could, could turn could turn them in a different direction. Number one, the defeat of this big tactic would be an enormous setback. And we're doing everything we can. Of course, none of us are voting for it, but we're doing everything we can to encourage opposition from the other two. In this country, the report card you get is every two years. And uh, we're trying to hold down the damage until next year. So Mitch McConnell responds with, there isn't going to be an impeachment of President Biden. He says President Biden is not going to be removed from office. And well, that's because the Democrats are in control of both the House of Representatives and the Senate. And remember, to be impeached, you have to be um, voted on in the House and the Senate. And remember, when the Democrats tried to impeach former President Donald Trump, the Democrats controlled the House and they were able to impeach him in the House, former President Donald Trump. They were able to impeach him in the House because they had control of the House, the Democrats did, but the Democrats did not have control of the Senate and the Republicans were not willing to impeach a Republican president, and thus he was not fully impeached. He was impeached in the House, but not the Senate, and thus he remained the president. So Mitch McConnell being a, um, seeing exactly kind of what is happening here is that the Democrats are in control of the House and the Senate, so there's almost no way to impeach President Biden at this particular moment, with the Democrats being in control of the House and the Senate at this moment. And he mentions there that basically there's a report card every two years, which is um, the elections. In this case, the midterm elections. Now, the presidential elections are every four years, so that will be a full three and a half years from now. So President Biden's only about six months into his uh, presidential election. So that will be a full three and a half years from now. But the next midterm elections for the House and the Senate will be in about a year from now, November of 2022. So that is when the House and the Senate will be up for re-elections. Now, on, in about a month from now, in October 1st, comes the start of the new fiscal year. And that is when the Democrats will actually get more reconciliation cards. That's the start of the new fiscal year. And they will actually get more 
cards, more processes to pass more packages with the reconciliation process. So starting on October 1st, they will actually be able to pass more stimulus packages or infrastructure packages, or maybe um, easier way to look at it is multi packages with lots of things in them. So when we think about this $3.5 trillion stimulus package that they're working on right now, think of it as just a huge, huge package that has dozens or hundreds of things in this package. All of these items here, these are just the stimulus items that they're working on. Of course, there's other things in this package, such as climate change, um, green energy, a um, little bit of infrastructure, not a lot of infrastructure because a lot of the infrastructure is in the physical infrastructure package. That's $1.2 trillion that has been uh, passed in the Senate only and has bipartisan support. Mitch McConnell actually voted yes on that. And 19 Republicans voted yes on that in the Senate. OK, um, that's physical infrastructure. But there is other things in there. These are the stimulus provisions, basically things that are going to help the people stimulus programs, stimulus type items here. OK, um, you can see all these different things are be stimulus items being considered for this next package, okay? A fourth stimulus check is being considered. We have literally dozens of Democratic senators and Democratic House representatives that have said they are in support of a fourth stimulus check. In fact, here's what the Democrats have said. President Biden himself is open to a fourth stimulus check, apparently, and if Congress wants to put a fourth stimulus check in this package, that they can. Remember that Congress writes the bills, although the president himself is, has a lot of sway over this. If the president says, put a stimulus check in there, they'd probably put a stimulus check in there. But largely, the House and the Senate, that's where the votes themselves come from. 150 economists and 21 senators among support of recurring payments, monthly stimulus payments. Over 80 lawmakers now support further direct payments or fourth stimulus checks to Americans. We have over, this is just from the House of Representatives, over 80 different lawmakers, all Democrats, support further direct payments to Americans. So if there's all this support, they better include a fourth stimulus check when the time comes to it. Okay. Now, um, they could put other means of payments in there through other ways, like adult tax credits. That could just be a disguised name of a way to put money in people's pockets because um, they could put money in people's pockets through other ways, not necessarily call it a fourth stimulus check. They could put money in people's pockets through other types of name, other types of programs. But there are other um, lots and lots of different Democrats, meet the 28 lawmakers who want to make stimulus checks recurring in Biden's infrastructure plan. Remember, there's the physical infrastructure plan, and then they call the stimulus package, the $3.5 trillion stimulus package. Uh, it has several different names. They call it the stimulus package. They call it the American Families Plan. They call it the social infrastructure plan, um, the American Families Plan, the human infrastructure plan. Um, Senator Bernie Sanders is largely the one in charge of this plan. As you can see here, he's largely called the deal maker, the person in charge of this plan. It's largely called, even by the Democrats, they call it an anti-poverty plan. An anti-poverty plan, as you can see here. Senate Democrats agreed to a $3.5 trillion price tag on an anti-poverty plan. So, I mean, an anti-poverty package, an anti-poverty plan, I mean, if, it, if they're not going to include checks and help in an anti-poverty plan, I mean, what are they going to spend the money on? What are they going to spend the money on? We're going to find out here soon. We do know that there are several different proposals from the Democrats for monthly recurring checks that could be included in this package. At the bare minimum, uh, we need to see at least at least single stimulus checks, or again, they could be disguised under the under names of other types of programs. But we do have several different bills that have been proposed by the Democrats, Detroit Representative Rashida Tlaib and also Pramila Jayapal, the leader of the Democratic Progressive Caucus, have introduced a bill for a one-time $2,000 stimulus check 
followed by $1,000 monthly recurring payments that would go until one year after the pandemic is declared over. Again, this is an actual bill introduced into the House of Representatives by the Democrats. We have another one by Senator Ed Markey and Elizabeth Warren that is pushing President Joe Biden for $2,000 monthly stimulus checks. Again, this is what the Democrats are pushing for. I mean, Senator Ed Markey, Senator Elizabeth Warren, um, 21 different senators, over 80 different lawmakers, uh, 28 lawmakers in the senator in the Senate, Senator Bernie Sanders. I mean, he's the one in charge of this package. So um, these are the Democrats saying this. And remember, the Democrats are passing this package on their own without a single Republican vote. Remember, not a single Republican voted for the third stimulus check package, and not a single Republican is going to vote for this next stimulus check package. We've seen that in the preliminary votes, the motions to proceed. So um, not a single Republican voted yes on the motions to proceed. And all the Democrats voted yes on the motions to proceed as well. But remember, the motions to proceed are not the motions that pass the bill. They're just the motions to open up the reconciliation process. But these are what the Democrats are saying. So um, we're going to find out um, what they're going to actually put in the bill. Now, remember, these are all the different items in here. Um, they could put money in people's pockets through different ways, through different ways, whether they call it a quote, fourth stimulus check, or they do it through other ways, such as um, internet assistance, debt forgiveness, fourth stimulus check, monthly checks, uh, social security raises, Medicare expansion, which is expected to be in there to include hearing coverage, dental coverage, denture coverage, uh, vision coverage, hearing aid coverage, and possibly lower than Medicare eligibility age to age 60. Also, they are trying to extend the monthly checks to children called the child tax credits. Now, remember, those monthly checks are going to end at the end of this year, $250 to $300 monthly checks called the child tax credits. Those were passed in the third stimulus check. Those monthly checks end, they were passed in the third stimulus check package. Those end at the end of this year for 65 million people. They want to extend those monthly checks um, in this next stimulus package, possibly or probably till 2025. But again, they have to pass the package. They have to do it. They have to get all the votes in the Senate. All 50 Democrats have to agree. And 99% of the Democrats in the House have to agree. Okay. That could be one form of monthly checks, but those checks would be only for children or families with children, about 65 million children or 65 million families with children. However, there is also a proposed adult tax credit in this next package, which would probably be or possibly be for adults making $50,000 or less. It's also called the adult tax credit, the earned income tax credit, but it could possibly be for anybody making less than $50,000 Remember, the child tax credit in this last package, they made a key change that you didn't even need any earned income at all. So, for example, you could be somebody on Social Security who doesn't even have earned income. You could be a stay-at-home mom who doesn't even have any earned income at all, and you now get the child tax credits. In previous years, um, you needed to have earned income to get the child tax credits. They could do that as well for the adult tax credits. OK, um, but there's a lot of different things on this list that could put money in people's pockets in different ways. Utility assistance, mortgage assistance, twenty five thousand dollar home buyer credits, Internet assistance, debt forgiveness, paid family and medical leave, adult tax credits, health insurance tax credits, unemployment credits, lower prescription drug prices, lower taxes for people making under $400,000, and they're going to be paying for all these by raising taxes on people making over $400,000 and raising taxes on corporations. This bill, the $3.5 trillion stimulus package and the $1.2 trillion physical infrastructure package is different than all three of the previous stimulus check packages. The first two stimulus check packages passed by former President Donald Trump 
stimulus check number one, stimulus check number two, and stimulus check number three um, passed by President Biden. All three of those, um, there were no tax raises um, and basically nobody paid for them at all. Okay. I say this, people always get a little bit confused when I say this. We say, well, didn't the taxpayers pay for them? Not really. Not really. And here's why. Because the government already runs a deficit every single year. Okay. And what I mean by that is the government spends more money than they take in in tax dollars. So every year, pretty much every single year, there was one year that um, former President Bill Clinton said that we, we've balanced the budget. We actually have a surplus. We're actually going to take in more money than we make. Um, but at, when all of a sudden done, the Congressional Budget Office says, well, you made a good try, but you actually we actually had a little bit of a deficit. But it was actually pretty good because pretty much almost balanced the budget. Okay, For the most part, 99% of years, the government spends more money than they make. They run a deficit. Government just does not take in enough tax money as they spend. So for the most part, every year, the government spends way more money than they take in. And that's without a pandemic, okay? That's without all these stimulus packages, okay? Um, former President Donald Trump actually spent $8 trillion. He added $8 trillion onto the deficit. Here's a headline, if you don't believe me. I'm not picking sides or anything like that. I'm just kind of showing this for proof here. I like to show proof um, on my headlines and stuff just so people believe me. It's not that I'm picking sides or anything, but if you think about this, the first stimulus check package passed by former President Donald Trump was $2.3 trillion. And that just went to the national deficit because they didn't raise taxes or anything. It just went to the national deficit. The second stimulus check package was almost a trillion dollars as well. So between the first two stimulus check packages passed by former President Donald Trump, that was like $3.3 trillion. That alone is almost half of this $8 trillion that he added to the national debt in his four years. So just two stimulus packages alone was almost half of the $8 trillion. And honestly, Biden's probably going to spend more than that. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. So I'm just telling you guys the truth about both parties. Trump spent over $8 trillion that he added on to the national deficit. Biden's probably going to spend more. He's probably going to spend more. Let's be realistic. But because well, Biden spent that third stimulus check package, $1.9 trillion, let's just say $2 trillion for round numbers, that went right onto the national deficit as well. Very similar to former President Donald Trump's first stimulus check package, which was $2.3 trillion. Both those packages went right onto the national deficit. But it is what it is. It's a, it's a pandemic. You got to help people out. You got to help the economy out. If you don't do that, we'd be in 1929 and the economy would collapse, Wall Street would collapse, pensions would collapse, 401ks would collapse, and it would be way worse than what we had. Okay. We wouldn't be even. Like the economy would have collapsed, like run on the banks, everything, right? Just like you don't even want to know what it would, but it would have been like, right? Um, imagine no stimulus checks, no unemployment bonus, just like 37% of all small businesses went out of business. Imagine if there was no, no P paycheck protection programs, no stimulus, no unemployment bonus. Imagine if there was nothing. Imagine if there was nothing. We would, instead of 37% of small businesses go out of business, we would have probably had like 77% of small businesses would have went out of business. It would have been like 1929 all over again, all over again. Like it would have been terrible guys, really, really bad. Okay. The modern day stimulus packages have literally like saved our economy, saved our economy, no doubt. And that's why both Republicans and Democrats have passed this. Remember that last year when the pandemic started, Republicans had control of the Senate and the presidency, two out of three. Okay. So Republicans before, Republicans are just against it now, honestly, because the Democrats control everything, the House, the Senate, the presidency. So it's just the edge old battle of, you know, if, if Democrats hate Republicans, Republicans hate Democrats, which that's honestly really what it is. Um, Remember, Republicans passed the second stimulus check packages in December, a month before Biden came into office. So they were for stimulus one month before Biden came in. Biden came in, now they're not for stimulus. So it's really, they're just against Democrats, to be honest. 
Um, but these next two stimulus packages, or I should say the $3.5 trillion stimulus package and the infrastructure package are different than the last three stimulus check packages because all three of those, the two from former President Trump and the third stimulus check package, all those went on to the national deficit. But this $3.5 trillion stimulus package and the infrastructure package are both going to be paid for, at least in the majority. They're going to be probably somewhere between 80 and 90% paid for because they're going to raise taxes on the rich. They're going to raise taxes on corporations. They're paying for it with leftover stimulus money. Remember that. That's paying for a large portion of the physical infrastructure package. They're, yeah, there's like almost $2 trillion of leftover stimulus money. Remember that. They're using leftover unemployment money. They're using that. They're using money from pharmaceuticals. Remember, they're going to force pharmaceutical companies to lower their prescription drug prices. They're going to be using all sorts of creative different ways to pay for these packages. So um, the $3.5 trillion is not going to go on to the national deficit. Maybe a little bit will. And the $1.2 trillion infrastructure package is not going to go on to the national deficit either. If it was, the Republicans wouldn't have voted for it. Okay. Um, they would have passed it through reconciliation if they didn't. But that's why Mitch McConnell voted for it because he wouldn't have voted for it. Just being real here. Um, but that's the only reason they voted for it because it's being paid for, like almost being paid for, 90 some percent of it. Okay. Um, but that's why both these two packages are very different. That's why they're raising taxes on corporations, they're raising taxes on the wealthy, and they're using leftover stimulus money to pay for these packages. But at the end of the day, they need to make sure that they help out people as much as possible with stimulus checks or whatever they're going to call them. If they're going to call them some other type of name, child tax credits, adult, we all know what child tax credits are, adult tax credits, um, put money in people's pockets, help out people with as much stimulus programs as possible, rent assistance, internet assistance, utility assistance. Medicare benefits. Those Medicare benefits are actually going to greatly help a lot of seniors because they're benefits that are going to go on forever, forever. A lot of seniors do not have these benefits, and they're going to be benefits that go on literally for the rest of your life. So, for example, if you're 65 right now and you get these benefits till your the rest of your life, if you live to your 100, you're going to get these benefits for 35 more years, every single year, every single year. These are going to be benefits you get year after year after year, hearing, vision, dental, hearing aids, dentures, and they're going to lower the Medicare eligibility age to age 60. You know, also the free college. Now, I know, I, I know not everybody's going to take advantage of this, but that is going to help out millions and millions of people in our country. There's going to be a lot of different things in this package like that, like those two different things, all those things on that list that are going to help out tens of millions of people in our country. So let's hope that they get on their horse, they pass this, and let's hope that it is everything that it could be, $3.5 trillion, and it helps out as many of our viewers here, our extended family. So let me know your thoughts. I will keep you up to date with all the developments. Remember, new videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure to subscribe down below. It's completely free to do so. Click the bell icon after subscribing um, to get notifications, reminder notifications, when we go live with new videos. You can click this top video here to watch my newest stimulus check video next. And this video is new data that has come out about how Social Security could be in trouble. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.